Thank you for tuning in again. Today, I, I'm not going to talk a lot about tuning printers. Well, this is a Tune 4 printer, but I would actually like to look at the M4 design from Voron and why I called this design M404. What has changed on the design? It looks like the M4, but it's not the M4 anymore. So to jump straight into it, um, if you would measure the body width of this uh, extruder, then it is wider with about five millimeters wider than what it what the original is. The big difference is inside. I am not using the BMG um, gears as in the original design, but I'm actually using the NF um, extruder gears. So these are two teeth actually grabbing on the drive gear, driving the, um, the, the, the secondary gear inside. I just thought it was time to modernize this extruder a bit for my needs. The filament loading is still super easy. You can just push the filament in. So if this is, um, if you open and disengage the gear, then it would still be just as easy as before to load and unload filament. And there's my next point that I would like to talk about was loading and unloading the filament in the original design. The original design was designed for a small pancake motor and you actually have two holes on this position. You will also see if you look at the original design and I'll blend it into the video that this gear is actually sitting on the right hand side and not like now on this one on the left hand side. I actually mirrored the design for my needs is that this section over here is new and these two holes, the mounting holes have disappeared. The big thing that I didn't like about the M4, and it's always been the reason why I never used the M4, was that it was a back mount, or you had to use a very small pancake motor to actually side mount this somewhere on the extruder, or on the extrusion, um, the aluminium profile, to be able to actually get to it to load your, your filament. A lot of the uh, Voron Zero users mounted at the back of the printer, and I don't always want to turn the printer to actually load and unload the, um, the filament. So I was looking for a way to easily mount this to a aluminum profile. So you can mount it, and this is the position how I will mount it onto my printer. And as I have all of the water cooling and electronics already behind my printer, this is the position it's going to look like. So it's going to be really easy to just disengage the gear, load my filament in, and it's all going to be eye level so I can actually see what I'm doing. So I can load the filament in, engage the gear again, and we're ready to go to, to start printing. As I mentioned, this will be a secondary extruder. What does that even mean, secondary? Well, it's not the main one. The main one will stay on my tool head, but I do like to use eight kilogram filament rolls. And I do find if the roll is new and there is seven to eight, even six kilogram of filament still on the roll, that I cannot print the same quality at the same speed, like if the roll only has a kilo or half a kilo on it. So I can really see in print quality that the um, main extruder is suffering through the weight that it has to pull and extrude um, into a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And that's why I decided to, to, to um, make a secondary one. And if you ask on, on forums or Discord, people will say use an old extruder, LGX extruder, a um, VZBot old extruder, just something just to pull the filament. I know this is a very, very good extruder. It can really pull kilograms, but I wanted to do something new 
Uh, otherwise, I would not or it would not even be worthwhile mentioning it. So the main difference is body got wider by about five millimeters, putting the NF uh, gear inside of it. Then I didn't 3D print any of the parts. I actually am using aluminum parts just to make it more, more robust uh, to use. Then this can be mounted with three. There's actually another hole down here. So it's actually three. You don't have to use three. You can only use two. But um, I decided to put three holes in to really lock this onto the, um, onto the, the aluminum frame. It will come in actually six versions. So this one is a spacer for a three millimeter backplate that you cover your printer up with. It will come with one that is just flat and straight and one in Voron style that fits into the six uh, milli or the, yeah, the, the six millimeter groove in your aluminum profile. For right hand side, or this would be on the left hand side back of your printer or right hand side for your printer. So this part here will be in, in six different versions. And again, if this would be upright, it would be mounted in this, this position. But the other cool thing is if you have idea to run a secondary or even Bowden on a printer, you could also top mount it now, which makes it very easy to, to actually mount on, on the side of your printer. The, getting to it is super easy now. Um, and and that, that was the idea. That's why I redesigned it and made it the 404. Then you've probably noticed I'm missing, I'm missing two screws and the shaft here looks very long. I um, actually was joking a few weeks back with uh, Omron from Omronello. He is the designer of the Kraken motors. And I bought this uh, motor last year sometime. It was a 0 0.9 um, degree um, Kraken motor, the first, first generation. And I didn't really know what to do with it because I only had one motor. I couldn't really use it on any of my printers. So I decided to make also something of the M404 to make it a double shear version. So let me just try and do this with one hand. So normally, and you can still run your short shaft version, the, version, the, the extruder will work exactly the same. You would then only use M12 screws over here with little washers to bolt down your, your motor. Now I made a, a bearing holder, so you can just slide it on at the top. And this will just give you that little bit extra support when you start pulling the belt and tensioning the belt. Again, this is a very long shaft. And the way that it got mounted is in the original design, the um, 80 tooth gear is actually right next to the housing. And now through the positioning of the motor and then in the longer shaft inside, it had to be placed in this position as it is now. Otherwise the inside shaft, the, the default shaft that comes in, in lots of kits is just that I would say two millimeters too short now. So that's why I had to mount it like this. So so that is what it would look like with a double shear version. So you can really pull on this and these two screws will just support that shaft a little bit so that it doesn't, it doesn't bend over time if you use maybe a tool to just give it that little bit of, of extra tension on it. So yeah, there's the Kraken motor mounted. And uh, Omran, this is uh, one is for you. I told you I'm gonna build the extruder uh, with a Kraken motor. So there we go, Kraken motor on a Voron M4, double shear, new gears in to actually get this power that this motor can actually deliver onto the filament. Um, I think this is going to be a beast. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, um, please consider subscribing because in a future video, I am going to do a full, um, 
electrical component a video. I've been asked a few times to do something like that. And I will also reveal how powerful this is because I was thinking to maybe pull some weight um, with this or play around pulling the kids on a, on a bicycle to see if it can actually pull uh, a few kilograms what the power is of this combination now with the Kraken motor, the 80 tooth gear, the double gears inside. Um, I mean, this is a little power box just to push filament. Also in this combination, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this would work as a Bowden um, function, just straight main um, extruder, pushing the filament into the, into the, the nozzle. I'm definitely going to test that as well. If this would perform just as good as a direct drive, and I know there's a lot of controversy, TPU can't be the same, pressure advanced, but if you really print six or 700 millimeters a second, we deactivate pressure advanced. We don't use pressure advanced anymore. So it's because it just hinders you for printing fast. And if I deactivate pressure advanced, can't I use a Bowden system anymore? I know that uh, Print 247, it's a German English channel made in Germany. He uses the M4 on his little Voron Zero and does some crazy prints with it. So definitely it's going to be worthwhile testing this. In a secondary configuration, Annex Engineering has made the um, um, uh, belay, belay. Let's call it belay. It's this little three D printed design that they created. This is not my design, but I think it's brilliant. You install on your clipper uh, some software that they wrote. You print uh, four components actually to to put this together. And how this works is on the left hand side, when your main extruder starts pulling the filament through, it's going to engage the switch, which is inside. And as soon as that gets engaged, it will kick on the secondary extruder, starting to push filament in, and this will disengage. So it will actually go back again. Then as you are busy printing, it will then engage, it will put on the motor and it will disengage again. And this actually happens then the whole time while you're printing, it moves forward, backwards, forward, backwards, and then pushing the filament through with this extruder. So this extruder won't be on the whole time while you're printing. It will come on and off as the filament is needed or as the first um, extruder is using up or pushing out the filament, this guy will work. I have not tested this on any of my printers, so I don't know how this will work on, let's say, a fast print when you are pushing the printer and, let's say, printing 600 to 800 millimeters a second, how this little guy is going to just jump forwards and backwards, um, if that's even practical, if the little switch inside will handle that over a longer period of time. Maybe this also will need to be updated in the future for something um, more electronic, more digital. So it's just a little sensor inside or a little magnet combined. So as it moves over like a whole switch, that it would actually trigger it and not having to actually switch or click the, um, the switch that is inside. So yes, this is what I wanted to quickly show you. Uh, just a small update what I'm busy with. And after this video, I'm going to install it and get some other things ready. There's some big uh, changes being done on the printer at the moment to see or the, the way forward to try and improve the print quality at higher speeds. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video. If you have any questions, please uh, drop your comments um, in the comment section. And otherwise, you can find me on Discord. I will leave you all the links. The Voron Original M4, if you've never seen it, I'll leave you the, the links uh, below. All of these parts, when the video comes out, will be on printables for you guys to, to download for free. Um, and again, you don't need to use a crack and you can also use a short shaft. 
the kids I the the kits that I got, I will leave you the link for it. Where I found the NF gear, this is from Melo 3D. I will also leave you guys the, the the link below, and also of course NX Engineering for making this awesome little jig to actually use a secondary extruder. I will definitely leave you the link below and uh, take your time reading through the instructions. It's really worthwhile having a look at it um, just to improve your print quality. Thanks again for watching and I'll speak to you guys soon.